Okay, good morning everybody, it's Mike. and Thanks for jumping on with me this morning. I've got a different kind of conversation for you this week. I wanna to talk to you this week about eight truths that we should all consider adopting. Eight truths. And I'm just gonna run through the eight with you this morning and then each morning this week, we're gonna take a little deeper dive into it for those of you that are interested. These are things that uh, I found to be true in my career. I think you will as well. Let's just start with a quick overview of the eight for today. Uh, number one, growing my database is a daily steady endeavor. Mm -hmm. A little bit every day. Look, we all want a strong, robust database uh, that we can communicate with effectively on a very regular basis and that we're mining for referrals and repeat business wherever possible. But how do we create that? Well, it's a little bit every day. How do you eat an elephant? You eat an elephant one bite at a time. If you will work on your database each day to not only grow it in numbers, but in robustness as well. Uh, the depth of contact information, the depth of notes on each individual person, then this is how you'll see in uh, other truths, it's gonna be so critical to have this or we won't be able to implement a full strategy. Growing my database is a daily steady endeavor. Number two, it's the persistency of my consistency. Well, oh, that's gotta be number one. On my list, I've got it number two, but it's absolutely the most important. It's the persistency of my consistency. And it's so important because in our industry, nobody can do it. People can't be consistent from day to day. It, the research has shown it takes five to seven touches to even create awareness on the part of the customer that I exist. Five to seven touches. To, to, for them to even become aware that I exist. It takes many more to cultivate a prospect. So I've got to be persistently consistent every day. Number three, helping is the new selling. Yeah, it is. You know, back in the 80s and 90s, they taught us closing techniques. And at one time, I would have told you I have 14 different ways to close a customer. Hey, Mr. Customer, if you felt like See, I was going to do it for you. I can do it. It's a little early, but I can do it. Hey, Mr. Customer, if you felt like you could make more money in less time by listing your house with me today, would you be prepared to make that decision? Would you, would you, would you? See, that was one closing technique. And I had different types in different categories. The assumptive close. Uh, the rhetorical close. There were all these different categories. And it worked back in the 80s and 90s, and then the internet came along, and the smartphones came along, and social media came along, and consumers started being bombed with advertising nonstop all the time. Until today, the term has evolved into the skeptical consumer. If your lips are moving, I don't wanna hear it. If you're calling me, I don't want it. Think about it from your perspective. If a telemarketer called you tonight, is there anything that you would buy from them? Or do you just want to end the call? If you just want to end the call and there's nothing you would consider buying from them, no matter what they were offering, then you, my friend, are a skeptical consumer. And we are skeptical for good reasons, mostly because we're bombed with ads nonstop all day long. Number four, what we focus on expands. I wish I could call you every morning and be your first conversation of every day to just remind each of us that what we choose to focus on this morning will expand. If you wanna to choose to focus on the fact that it's raining outside today and that your hair clothes got wet while you were walking from your car inside, then you will have a shitty day. Good luck with that. Or you can choose to focus on the incredible amount of blessings that each of us have in our lives. You choose, but what I can promise you is whatever you choose will expand today. You will have a shittier day or you will have a better day. And guess who gets to decide that?
Mm -hmm. Number five on my list, the problem with all delegation is the delegate or. I'll preach, and I will, until the end of my days, that you need to get up, get dressed, and get to work. And I mean early. Why? Because in order to grow your business, you're going to need to become a better delegator. And you are not a good delegator now. Every one of us on this call is a bad delegator. It makes for a good real estate agent, but it makes so that you run out of time in every week between the business you're doing and the family responsibilities you have and God forbid you have a personal life too where you have interests and hobbies you won't have enough time so you need to get ahead of the day because you will need to delegate many parts of your business parts that you don't feel comfortable delegating right now because only you can do it right Mm -hmm. I know, I was there too, and it's a limiting belief system. The problem isn't with the delegate E. The problem is always with the delegate OR. Number six, it's not about how many relationships we have, but how deep they are. Ooh. So go, let's go back to number one. Growing my database is a daily, steady endeavor. But Mike, isn't more people in my database good it is good it but it's not really about how many people are in your database but the depth of relationship with the people that are in there because what we're really trying to do is to create an environment that Tom Peters spoke about decades ago in his book in search of excellence we're trying to create an environment where we create raving fans and walking billboards it's not about how many relationships we have. It's about the depth of those relationships. Number seven, know your numbers. Where do your transactions come from? You know, the closings that you might have had year to day, where did those come from? And being able to look at it and see where your business typically is generated from. And then that's how you know where to focus, donate time and resources. Where do your transactions come from? And when we're talking about knowing your numbers, hey, make no mistake, I know we're crack addicted to dollar volume in this industry, but home prices went up 30% in the last year. You really taking credit for that? So your dollar volume should have gone up too. And most of these awards we give in this industry, they need to be completely reevaluated. And here in our office, they will be reevaluated at the end of this year. And guess what? The significant levels will all be going up because home prices have gone up so much. And we can't take any credit for that, can we? We've just kind of ridden that wave. Dollar volume is a bullshit number. It doesn't really tell you the story of anything. What does is the number of transactions we do each year. And here's the simple fact of why. You can control the number of transactions you do. You cannot control the dollar volume. And I know some of you don't like that, but it's true. Your dollar volume will be a reflection of the marketplace in which you work times the number of transactions you do. You can turn the volume up and down on the number of transactions you do by increasing or decreasing your daily activities. So what I'm going to encourage you to do this week is focus on the number of transactions, not the dollar volume. And number eight, and we're going to spend some time on this, 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 this concept this week, is running your business like a business. Running your business like a business. What do I mean? I mean, having a schedule each week like a professional does. What professionals in your world can you think of that don't have a schedule? Having your own profit and loss statement and learning how to read it and what areas to pay particular attention to. Um, having separate accounts for your business and your personal expenses and only paying yourself first and then only paying your business expenses from your business account and last how to handle taxes correctly folks these are eight truths 
that apply to our business we all should adopt and we're going to spend some time talking about each of these in more detail this week i hope you'll make an effort to be with me each morning and let's let's go as deep on this as we can by thursday afternoon and that's how we're going to go out and we're going to make it happen for ourselves <music>